Hello, Chris again. In this video, we are going to talk about high poly models and low poly models, as well as how do we get the low poly model. So here we have a high poly fire hydrant, which I made a while ago. And if I select this, you can see the edge flow. It's all quads and we have a lot of details in here, indentations and rounding edges, more indentations up here. And we even have um, the threading on the bolts and stuff up here, right? So this model is 285,824 triangles. And if you've watched the real-time artists versus cinematic artists video that I made, you'll start to understand that, you know, this might be okay for a cinematic model, but a real-time game engine, um, you wouldn't want to have assets that are this high poly. So our goal would be to take this asset and create a low poly version of it from where we could bake this information onto it. Let's look at the low poly. Here's the low poly version. And just about every redundant edge has been deleted and edges that are left in are there for a reason, either having to do with form factor or baking purposes. So we took this from, let's see, yeah, 285,000 triangles to uh, 3,536 triangles. All right, you can see that many of the fine details are missing on this low poly, right? Because we had to scrap them. The goal with the low poly is to capture the primary forms of the high poly. And by primary forms, I mainly mean the overall silhouette of the high poly. So if we stack these on top of each other, now both layers are on and you can see the mesh through each other, you see that they line up um, very well. Whenever you do this, you have a high poly and a low poly on top of each other, which you will need to in order to bake, you'll see volume changes, right? Because you've had to reduce the mesh. And when you reduce the mesh, you typically lose volume. So you'll get the um, you'll get the high poly sticking through the low poly. Um, so that's what I mean. But these indentations here, you know, are not present on the low poly model. And that's because the plan was to bake that information into the low poly model. If I turn off the high poly model and back onto the low poly model, which is again, our 3,536, and then I turn on uh, the textures, you'll see after the bake and texture work, this is what we get, right? So there are indentations here um, that make it look as if there's actual geometry that dips in, but there's not ge geometry that dips in, right? If I click here, I can still see the wireframe. Um, and there's no geometry to represent that indentation. So we want to get our models as low poly as possible and looking as good as possible. And there are several ways to do that. Before we discuss the ways to do that, let's look at an example model. So here we have a little um, shape that I made. And there are several things going on with this form. This is all one contiguous piece. It's all connected to each other. It was made through um, a cube and the extrusion tool and the multi-cut tool. So if we are creating a low poly or we're just cleaning up our mesh, we want to get rid of what I call redundant edges. A redundant edge is an edge that does not inform the forms or the shape of the model, right? So this edge right here is not a redundant edge because it lies on a turn, right? It is the corner of this sort of square here. This edge right here runs vertically and it is a redundant edge. If I were to get rid of this, the forms do not change, right? Because this vertical edge is the same as this one and this one. And these two corner edges are the important ones that are holding this form together. So if I look at this, this entire edge loop here that runs all the way around is not informing you know, the shape or the model in any way. So I'm going to hold control and hit delete. 
and I've just gotten rid of that edge and notice that the model hasn't changed at all. These are also redundant edges. I'll hold control and hit delete. So this, whoops, this face right here is technically a four-sided face, right? Even though it looks like a triangle because there's an edge here. So there's one, two, three, four sides on both sides. However, this edge right here, even though this is a quad, this edge isn't doing anything because this is a um, perfectly uh, straight edge here. There's no bend to it like this. So I could hold control and hit delete and get rid of that edge. I've just created a triangle here. And when we are in the final mode of cleanup, then we're less worried about having everything be quads. We're more worried about reducing our poly count as low as possible to be efficient. If you're working in a studio, you're going to get a budget, a triangle or a polygon, uh, polygon budget. Uh, and in my class, you also receive a budget when you get an assignment and you must meet that poly budget. So if I say, you know, you are going to make a, the NES controller and you have 3000 tries to do it. I mean, 3000 triangles, right? Uh, so you'll need to reduce your low poly so that it meets that 3000 triangle uh, budget. The high poly can be as high poly as it needs to be. Um, so for props and hard surface objects, you can triangulate most of the time. You can triangulate um, at will without issue. If we were doing a character or some sort of organic model that needs to bend and deform with animation, then you're not going to be able to triangulate everywhere because you need the model to deform properly. Right now, we're just focusing on hard surface props, so we're going to follow that workflow. Let's take a look at this edge loop here. So this edge loop is important because it's holding this vertex right here, which connects to this edge right here, um, and that informs this turn here. So it's important, this edge right here is the most important one. We can't get rid of this edge or else we'll end up with an end gun in here. However, the edge you know, from here all the way to here um, is useless. This is, these are a bunch of redundant edges. So what we can do is triangulate. So I can go to my modeling toolkit, target weld, and I can weld this, let's say, to, whoops, weld this to here. And let's do the same thing on the other side, like so. Now I can double click on this edge to select the whole thing, hold control and hit delete. So I've created a triangulation here and I've reduced the um, poly count again. I'm currently at 140. Let's go ahead and do a bunch more triangulation and get this as low poly as possible. So I'll go to my target weld and I'll just weld this edge here. This one. Yeah. So when I look at your work, if I critique your work, then one of the things I'll look at is the, um, are the edges and are there any redundant edges? Does every edge inform the model in some way? So I'm looking to make quads um, and triangles here. Just however I can reduce the poly count. And that's looking pretty good. So any other edge, if I were to take any other edge and triangulate it or delete it, um, I would run into issues with the model. Uh, changing in some way. And that's where we want to be at. So this is now still holding the shape and it's reduced to 80 triangles. So it's pretty good. So in the workflow that I teach, we start primarily with making the high poly model and then we make the low poly model. 
There are things that we can do along the way to help with the low poly model uh, in terms of our workflow and reducing the amount of time it takes to create it. We can break down creation of the low poly model. And let me just move this over here so we can see. So how do we get from here to here? We can break it down into three fundamental ways. The first way would be to work from a mid poly to delete and triangulate edges. A mid poly would be essentially a version of your model that does not have reinforced edges um, and has not been smoothed. So essentially it's not, you know, we haven't reduced it. We haven't triangulated it. Um, let's look at this example again. And we'll look at the, the high poly version as well. So here is the high poly, right? I could smooth this and it would hold its forms nicely. And here is the mid poly, right? We just created the low poly uh, with this model. So here I have the mid poly. I've not added reinforcing edges to get to this point yet. A good way to get to the mid poly, either as you're modeling the object, you can duplicate it when you know you're at a point um, where you're you know, from then forward, you're going to be creating reinforcing edge loops, or you can import an old save prior to when you created reinforcing edge loops. So mid poly will save you a lot of time. Um, so that's the first way. The second way would be to recreate the model from scratch using snapping uh, where possible, right? So I could create another cube and uh, start to scale this. Oops. And now you can see I've recreated that shape from scratch. Frequently, this is much faster than um, the next option that you have, which is to, um, as a last resort, I could you know, duplicate this model. And then I could come through and see how I have all this fenced, all these fenced edges. I could come through and uh, clean up and delete all these fenced edges. And then after I deleted the fenced edges, then I would go through with, you know, triangulation, optimizing um, the model as I did earlier. So this takes some practice uh, to really understand and feel confident about. I'm going to create a workout for everyone to do in order to get some of that practice in and then if you are following along with the NES controller tutorial, uh, after video 15, we'll be getting into creating the low poly for that model.